ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين In the name of Allah the compassionate the merciful All praise is due to Allah And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet Muhammad His family, his companions and all of his followers Until the day of resurrection I'd like to welcome you to this new episode of this series Glimpses from the prophetic biography that is from the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and today we are addressing a very important topic and this is the revelation of the glorious Quran this is the first time we are talking about the first time the Prophet peace be upon him received the glorious Quran and you know, although there were some earlier things that took place in the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, such as the true dreams that he saw in his dream. And you know, the dreams of prophets are true. Shaitan can never or would not never uh, come to the dream of any prophet and uh, think that he would receive anything. So this was the beginning and then, like, there were some signs to show that he was prepared to be a prophet. And once the right time came, there was a, a, a very advanced preparation, which, where the prophet, peace be upon him, wanted to get away from the uh, hustle and bustle of Mecca and to go to the mountain where the cave of Hira is. So he went to Hira, and that is up to the north of the city of Mecca and uh, in a very isolated area. Yes, it was overlooking Mecca and, the, uh, and he was able to see the Kaaba from there. But spending nights, imagine spending nights alone in that cave, just praying, worshipping Allah, remembering him and uh, invoking him and just pondering around, uh, looking at the uh, open sky and the open area around him, he would carry some food and, uh, and drink with him, that is water, to bring it over to the cave. And he would stay like for a number of days and nights and go back to Khadija, to his wife, and again uh, supply himself with another uh, uh, trip and stay again in that cave for some time. Now, finally, uh, when he was in the cave in the month of Ramadan, on the day of Monday, that is the day when he started to get the revelation. And the very interesting story, very unusual, something that is so unique in the sense that he, that Jibreel alayhi salam came over and he came to him and he actually uh, saw him and he was very fearful, of course, because he is an angel, but it was Allah's uh, 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 decision, glory be to him, to make the Prophet, peace be upon him, receive the prophecy, first to learn the glorious Quran. And you know, the first thing that he came when he came to him and he held him so strong, he held him with arms and uh, after it was very difficult for him to breathe, he released him and he said, read. He said, I'm not a reader. I cannot read. Again, he did the same thing a second time and he held him so strongly and tightly and then finally he released him and said again read and he said I'm not 
a reader. I cannot read. Again, he did that a third time. And finally, when he was not able to read, and he responded by not being able to read, he said, اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم So read in the name of your Lord who created created man from a clot خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم Read and Allah is your Lord is, is so generous. الذي علم بالقلم who taught with a pen. علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم taught man what he knew not. So that was the beginning and he kept reading after him but he was very, very fearful and immediately after this incidence right in the cave of Hira on Monday in the month of Ramadan, he came rolling down the mountain and running into the house of Khadija. Uh, may Allah be pleased with her. And she received him and he said, please, please cover me up. He was shaking. He was very, very fearful. And she calmed him down. She covered him until he got back again into a normal uh, status and he, and then she told, he, he started to tell her exactly what happened. And uh, she said, well, you are a unique person. And believe me, nothing wrong will happen to you because you are so uh, uh, great in your life. Your conduct is great. You are uh, a kind man and you uh, 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 help the destitute. You feed the, the, the needy, you help people, and you are generous to your guests. Wallahi, she swore by Allah. Wallahi la yukhzik Allahu abadan. Allah will never let you uh, down. Allah is not going to humiliate you. So he, she gave him confidence. It was very, very needy at that particular time. Not only that, but she called uh, someone who is very old, wise, person and that is her cousin Waraka ibn Nawfal. Now Waraka ibn Nawfal uh, was uh, a Christian at that time but he used to write the gospel in Hebrew in the Hebrew language as much as Allah uh, uh, made him so and then finally she took him over to Waraka and said uh, please uh, tell uh, uh, waraqa, what happened to you? So he said, uh, uh, my, my, my nephew, tell me exactly what happened to you. He told him what happened to him uh, on the Mount uh, of uh, uh, Anur, uh, that is in the cave of Hira. And he told him the story. He said, well, what you were told was the same uh, uh, angel that came to Moses, peace be upon him. So there is no difference. He said that you're coming from the same source. Whatever came to Moses, whatever came to Jesus is basically the same that came to you. So that is the preparation and the confidence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, surprised him by this very, very strong uh, incidence in order to prepare him. And then when uh, the confidence came and the assurance came from Khadija first, and then from Muraqa ibn Nawfal second, they were, she, he was relieved. And then he started to ponder upon what happened to him. And it, it, it really took some time. And even the revelation stopped at one point before it came back again. Now, some scholars said that it uh, waited for uh, as long as six months. But then Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said that uh, the revelation stopped for about uh, 40 days. So after 40 days, again, the revelation came, but then the revelation came in a different, uh, a, a different way. He saw, as he said, I was walking and all of a sudden a, a cloud came over my head and then I looked up in the, in the sky 
and there on a chair was the same angel that came to me, that is Jibreel alayhi salam, and he said uh, again, he, uh, I, was, I was very, very fearful and I fell on the ground. I fell on my knees first and then fell on the ground um, out of fear, his, his image. You know, Jibreel, peace be upon him, is, is really so huge. He has 600 wings and he can cover the whole horizon when he opens his wings. So you could imagine the uh, uh, magnanimity of, of and the hugeness of his creation. But then uh, that is just to make this unique incidence um, a sign, a strong sign that yes, Allah is taking care of you. You have been picked, you have been selected. You know, he passed through all these times with, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with Quraysh and uh, what happened to him and, and they were thinking that uh, although he was, he was leading a good life, but still, uh, uh, of course, <laughs> it is difficult. Who can believe him when he says, I am a messenger sent by Allah, the Almighty? It was, it was not easy. To, uh, to talk about this. So what happened is that he, uh, he went on and uh, uh, it was revealed again to him, يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُدَّثِّرِ قُمْ فَأَنذِرْ وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ وَثِيَابَكَ فَطَهِّرْ وَالرُّجْزَ فَهْجُرْ and so on until the end of this uh, Surah Al-Muddathir. So in this Surah or chapter of the Glorious Quran, he said, O oh, the one wrapped or covered, uh, stand up and warn, give the warning. Now it is time to deliver the message. So he was first uh, prophesied with Iqra, but then being a messenger to deliver, to convey the message with Ya Ayyuhal Muddathir. So that's how the revelation started. Now, don't think that this is the only thing that happened. Every time uh, the angel Jibreel, peace be upon him, would come to the Prophet to uh, teach him some uh, uh, parts of the Quran, he would have a very, very uh, uh, strong uh, time and, and, and he, would, uh, he would be uh, so much sweating uh, because it is heavy. As Allah says in the glorious Quran, inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila. Very, uh, verily we will deliver something that is so heavy and strong upon you so uh, uh, no one else can bear it except by the permission of Allah the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala so we are talking about this uh, uh, great uh, uh, book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being first revealed uh, piece by piece as it started with Iqra which is read and that showed us the importance of reading and learning how to read and write. The Prophet was um, a, a, an illiterate person because it was intended. He did not get any knowledge from anyone except Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is his own teacher. Allah is the one who taught him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who selected him for delivering this great message for humanity. So he was having this difficulty. Uh, Aisha radiallahu anha would say that even in the most cold day, on the most cold day in the winter time, he would be uh, dripping of sweat, meaning out of this uh, hardness of receiving the glorious Quran. And even he would be away uh, from people uh, just as to receive this and to, and he was in a hurry to, to read the glorious Quran and to repeat it. But Allah says to him, لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به إن علينا جمعه وقرآنه فإذا قرأناه فاتبع قرآنه ثم إن علينا بيانه So Allah says, uh, do not uh, uh, move your tongue with it. Uh, do not haste, uh, hasten into, into reading it. Allah will give you the assurance that you will read it. We will collect it for you. We will give it for you. We will uh, make sure that uh, you will get everything um, uh, in, in, the, in, the, uh, uh, in the right time and you'll never forget anything of it. Yes, indeed, that's what the Prophet's peace be upon him did. And he continued, he continued this path of uh, uh, receiving this wahi and, and revelation. And then finally, he would memorize it and deliver it and give it to the companions and convey it 
to the uh, to his own people in order to convey Allah's message. I will continue with you with another uh, topic in this series, glimpses from the fragment prophetic biography. Until then, I leave you with Allah's care and protection. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما